Yeah, it's like, I mean, you need to for that. Well, it does be older guy had it for the last five years. He passed away. Meant to be. So yeah. that I'll be like here forever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
looks like the first is 17 South 3rd Street. Application for consideration of a sign to be located between the front windows. We have representatives present for that this evening. Nobody's here for that. Case to skip over or you guys can still have on over here. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think I had any concerns with what was presented. Like a pretty low profile bracket. And when it comes to actual signage, we don't have any as far as what's on our sign. No, out. just the way it's mounted at the sign session. Wood, and then um, we can close it with white um, 
I don't have it. I guess there's not an updated picture, but it's pretty cool. Sorry about that. I, I didn't realize it was supposed to So it looks like stone or synthetic stone. No, no it's, it's actually, they're old shingles. Oh, okay. They're old roof shingles that were underneath of there. So when we took that enclosed porch off, it left that exposed. Mm -hmm. And then there was a period of time where my guy couldn't get out there. Hollow Ridge exteriors came in and then they, they did both sides in the front and white um, aluminum siding or siding. I guess it, would be, it wouldn't be aluminum, it would be siding. Okay, so that's all covered with the Correct, yes. Shingles. And I can provide, I can provide the, the um, board. But no structure was added back on the roof or no, roof or anything. No, else. it's my intention to continue to you know to continue to spruce the property up but there was no there's no structural change to it other than the dilapidated mm -hmm. enclosed porch area I, I mean honestly i had no idea that this was in the historic district i had years ago when i bought this property i did walk it with a borough official and it no never once was there a hard issue discussed or anything in the renovation interior renovations that I did so I, I had no knowledge that this was a hard issue until I got the letter um, so I didn't change any if you want historicity of the look of the building or the, there was no historical uh, um, aesthetics that are attached to this building I just tried to make it nicer you know without changing any of the the, the integrity of the building. So, did you get building permits for the and siding the work? No, I did not. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that you needed a building permit to place the siding. No, I meant to do anything, tear it off, move the electrical, do anything. We no, not, none of that was changed. I did. I did walk it with the borough official when I purchased the property. When I did the interior renovations but exterior there was I didn't know that I needed to get a building permit to replace the siding on it. I didn't mean to replace the siding I meant to tear that off a demolition permit. I did not meaning like wood or Log cabin, wood. No, there was no log cabin. No, it's just a log cabin. Okay, but it's not. It's not a log cabin. It's a wood exterior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, if you what you see there, that's not like that's not any type of brick or anything. That's act. Those are actually asphalt shingles. I was telling you what they were. What's the existing siding outside of the asphalt? That that siding there, yeah, that that was not that was just some type of siding. Is it a vinyl siding? I believe it was a vinyl siding. Yeah. I mean, I just tried to make a building that was not that great better, but. I didn't change anything in regards to the, you know. And what you, what's your goal? What do you want to do to it? It's a, it's a rental property. I mean, with, why are you here? I was here because the, I was approached by the, the borough saying that I needed to provide some type of documentation as to this and get your approval to change the siding to it. This is, a, this is a one of those retroactive mm -hmm. COAs where the work has been completed to this stage. Um, it, it was cited for lack of going through the proper permits. Our historic district requires a COA for any demolition on the outside of a, of a structure like this. So that that's kind of a after the fact come before the board. So in my mind, this is not a approving the materials and the style this is more of a review of, of how we got here and um unfortunately I, in my opinion this is this is a violation of our code because they failed to follow due process so it, it's more of a due process hearing in my mind 
or a process hearing than it is a approval of the, the design and the construction. Because the work is going in, the work's done. Mm -hmm. So the new side is very long. I think the siding is finished, the front porch is finished. Yes. Does the new front porch meet code? It, it was less than the height required to get a building permit, but I would say, I don't know if we looked at it in terms of going setbacks and numbers. It didn't meet the code. It didn't go through a building permit process. So if you're asking about building code, Do you have any images of what it looks like? I don't. Side? I can provide it to the board. If you need me to come back next month or again, I can provide photos of that. And I don't have any current ones with the current status. Yeah, that, that is the, that's the existing porch there, which was not out any further or any less than the, the, the previous dilapidated enclosed porch. And then everything that you see there in that picture has been rather than green uh, siding is now white siding. On the whole building or just the front? Uh, both sides. The only thing I had he didn't get a chance to do was the back. So you're actually residing the entire property? Correct. So I know this property. It, it was an illegal tube unit. It was falling down when he bought it. And he did <laughs> walk through the borough. And I truly believe that there's no way he knew that that was the hardest because when he bought it, he was trying to keep it as a tube unit was told it was not allowed to use units, so it was walked with a prior person. Multiple, multiple, multiple times, times. by the And the, the, property, the thing that was up front, that was porch, mm -hmm. was put on there so that they could make it a little to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he been working with something that was pretty right down. Yeah, and I, like and I said, if it was, the interior renovations, like I pulled a permit, I walked them with, I walked this property multiple times with a borough official. So I was not aware that it was a hard issue. Um, and I didn't know that I needed to pull a permit to replace siding in um, the porch. So I made careful that it was in, within the same, so, like the same size of the previous porch, but it, it's not enclosed, obviously. But I can provide photos of the new, what you see there, as it, as it sits today, which is new siding, and that, that, what you see there, which is the porch, and I can fill out any paperwork, whatever you got, whatever the borough board or the borough needs. It was not my intent in any way to, like, circumvent any process of this. It was just me just, you know, I had walked this property multiple times with borough officials, and no, no one ever said, like, this is... This is, you know, an underground railroad building and we need to, you know, keep this the way it is because it was certainly not in very good shape when I purchased it. Is it a rental unit now? It is. And is it registered? It, it will be, yes. So it's not? It is not. So part of, unless I'm wrong, part of the registration process is an inspection? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that'll take problem. care of all that. Yeah, and I, stuff, absolutely. But the front porch too, as I recall, has well, to be. Well, we're gonna have to look at it. Because again, you didn't get a permit to create construction to look at it and evaluate it in terms of how it needs to code. We'll go back and, and check it now, sure. Um, and yes, when when the registration process for the rental unit gets completed, we'll have to go in there and do an interior inspection of all. To Which I'm completely fine with all of that. Yeah. I think what we'd be curious with is most of the color and what product was put on and uh, just the aesthetic, overall aesthetics. Mm -hmm. that'd, be, that'd be, and so I think, I think it's unfortunate that it wasn't done for a sequence. And I think we'd like to see what products were installed. Oh, uh, absolutely. Images of how it was installed. Yeah, I can come back like next month or whenever you, you want me to. I can take pictures of it and I can attempt to get like a piece of the, the siding, right? Is that, yeah. is that what you're asking? I think to me, the point is how it, we don't know that it's being stored for this treatment because it doesn't appear to have our protection system in the case. So I don't know what the next step would be, but I think we'd be inclined to approve it on seeing photos and uh, materials. 
Sure, no problem. I've heard many you guys make a motion to move this to the March car meeting and Okay, you can come back down. So yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, I'll bring a small sample of the siding, and I'll take like that that photo right there of the new what it looks like today. Do you have um, building permits or building plans for the board, or you just build it? It was just built. Yeah, I mean, so I something to get some measurements. If you can get somebody out there and just measure the size and the imports and everything, and, and we yeah, for sure. Well. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can I can pull a permit too to. If the borough wants to come down and inspect what's been done thus far, that's fine. I mean, I will be going through that with the rent, rental registration pro process. So, right. whatever you, whatever, you, whatever the borough or or this board needs, I'm um, have no problem with why. This is a good perspective. I think it would also be interesting to see it from Front Street as well as Locust Street. There's no. You can't really see it from there. It's you can't see it from Front from Front Street. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think you can see it. I mean, there's a building directly in front of the other side on the back side. I'll take a picture from Front Street, too, if you like. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a picture from Front Street. I can take a picture on the, on the little alleyway there. I'll, I'll take, a, like, a whole round surround picture for you. Yeah, I think the purpose of part is how it views from the streets, and I think, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, not doubting the fact that you wouldn't you know, take the time to side correctly or decide it, you know. What, what was under the existing vinyl? Was it like wood platform, or do you recall? So there was asphalt shingles, and then there was uh, like tar paper, one and, like one by twelve, or and one then and then plywood, and then stick. Plywood. Well, some type of wood built. Yeah, wood shingles. Yeah. Oh. And in fact, my my guy actually insulate put insulation in there too. Yeah, there's the property. I mean, you can see the that was the existing uh, porch. So this is Living Stones here. So the Living Stones building blocks it from Front Street entirely. Mm -hmm. No, that's not true at all. It's not. You, you can see the whole uh, western elevation. That wasn't very good to say that, Mark. <laughs> but it's not going to be the same. But yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly visible. The side. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And I'm not doubting that it probably doesn't look much better than it did before. Well, it actually looks a lot better than it did yeah, before. Yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, I know it's not the Taj Mahal, but it looks a lot better than it did before. I mean, so the back screen and the sides, the front, are white? The back is going to be green because my guy did not get a chance to come back and finish it. But the sides, both sides and the front are white, yes. And then the back will be white? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion uh, table approval of this COA until further review at the March meeting. Um, if the applicant could return with photographs of existing conditions. Sure. Second. And for the discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Appreciate it. Consulting agreement with the Lancaster Historic Preservation Trust for technical support. So, some good news, I think. Um, we met with the executive director of the trust, and one of the many services that they provide is they, they can provide technical review for all the COA applications that come through here. And I think with all the work that we're doing to improve the integrity of our process and improve the integrity of our historic district, I think this is a plus for us to, to partner with them to, to get that level of technical expertise in these things. Um, they have submitted the um, agreement. Um, I thought it best if I brought it here, I'm going to take the council at their next meeting to authorize us to, to engage with them. But I want to be your guys' opinion first. What you thought of this and moving forward with them. In addition to doing COA review, they can help us look at our ordinance. Um, 
we, we have the approval now to move forward with the pre survey of the entire historic district. Um, they want to be partners with us through that process as well. So, to me, this is a win win for us to, to do this. There's a fee associated with it. It's, I think it's $200 to review. To me, that's worth it to have that technical level of review um, provided to you guys to make the best decisions possible. And I'm extremely grateful. I would agree. I think a lot of this had depends upon how Columbia Borough wants to interpret the Department of Secretary and Interior Standards. I'm not going to say the right one, but like to modify the store structure. Nathan and I were just talking about. It depends upon how the Columbia wants to handle their historic district in that. Will they allow contemporary design in the historic structure? Um, I think the trust might put on the hat that you have to preserve that. They might interpret that standard that it must be preserved and that maybe you couldn't modify a new structure. But I think it's a re really a question can you, can you interpret that to do an addition to a historic structure that does not match the historic structure? Mark, are you familiar with a report or study that was done, was referenced in the November meeting by Nora, I believe, that Suzanne Stallings, maybe 10 years or more ago, helped with a report identifying which properties were contributing and at what level? And yeah, that's, it, it's not so much a report as it is, and I have a mouth, it's okay. actually the original survey documents. And it's been summarized into a, a chart that, that lists every property that's in the historic district, annuals built, the style of architecture it is, and it has three factors. It has the, um, whether it's, and they don't use the term contributing or not contributing, but that's basically what it's saying. The, the condition of it, and the third part right now. So, yes, and that's. That's what's going to be redone with the okay. survey of the historic district. We're going to have updated information on all of these. For example, this house here was listed as non contributing okay. It's actually considered an intrusion in the historic district because it, it's lost its historical character and value. Mm -hmm. So this would be listed as a non contributing structure. And what I would like to see is get to the point where we modify our ordinance so that a contributing structure has to meet a higher standard of review than a non contributing structure. Yeah, I think. I think that's where you're going. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, and it's something that the board has discussed over the years I've been on it. Um, yeah, no, uh, we're yeah, just, I guess the question is where, how to access the, the existing report of what we do have. I'll show you quick. So I think we had this before. But you also have yeah. a grading system chart graphic right. system on oh, it. It sounds like that's a good yeah. starting point. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, that was built for the time. I didn't know if I ever asked him. So, you're already having to get it. Um, so, I guess the question is with the hardboard, I think, I don't know where Columbia is, but the hardboard, would that be too much? I'm sorry, what did you I, say? I don't, yeah, I basically you're wanting to know if there's a historic building that could be used for better use if they would not allow that to happen. Because if you look at, like, the church, that just, they're going to build onto it and they need to put bathrooms in. So they're going to change that structure because it needs to be updated to today's use. So it's going to change the architecture. So would we not allow that? I think restaurants are something to need this time. Well, we're going to just be making a recommendation. Sure. I think a great example is 315 Locust. We kept the facades of those. So from Locust Street, the, the facade looks the same. The back is all modern architecture. If that's what you're talking about, I think that's the kind of stuff we need to look at. New construction in the historic district, the apartments down at the end of Locust Street, right here in Front Street, um, modifications of at 144 locus, um, when you put that the metal railing on the front, I think those are all the items that we really need to look at and, and come up with a set of criteria to say, 
if, it, if it's a contributing historic structure in the historic district, then we want to get it back to as close to the original style as we possibly can. If it's a non-contributing, how do we put additions to the facade that aren't going to take away from the value and integrity of the historic district as a whole? I think that's how you evaluate the two different sets. Well, yeah, and I guess I was just asking, would that would we be bound? Would that limit us to rule against them in any fashion? Or yeah, I'm just asking the question. I, I think those are those are good comments for us to, to work with them because I think in the end it is our ordinance, it's, it's our district. We want we are right, we are the ones that have to determine how we want to preserve and protect our, our historic district. But I think it could to your point, I think it could give credence to a lot that's been discussed and and reinforce our decision going to the next mm -hmm. level within the borough's um, structure. Yeah. Because they could come in and say, oh, I'm just fine, I'll replace them with this. Because in my history, if you're in the historical district, like the uh, Great Red Hunt, the uh, Excelsior, that bag of windows was $100,000. Mm -hmm. Because they had to meet the code. Mm -hmm. And they could bring historic insight to just global structures that we don't know about. I know they have a huge existing archive at the right. So who currently reviews before it gets to us? You're saying they would do it for two hundred dollars per submission. So this one, this one, they would review this one, and they would review the previous one. So the the one on the Alan Avenue agent thing is very. Jessica reviewed that for us okay. and put that together. The sign review I did. So they would be putting the staff the staff reports together for us to get a view going forward. Mark, do you have a copy of one at uh, Susan did? Susan Collison? Yeah, back back then. Not with me, we can get one. That's probably a great example because it she outlined the properties in great detail, mm -hmm. um, talked about the structure of the property, talk, and then she also added the significance of the property. Mm -hmm. So you you sat with a lot of insight on what, you know, you just weren't taking a picture and trying to use your knowledge and do it. It was spelled out for you. So I, I think some of that's going to be very helpful for you. Right. I did too. That's what I think it Makes sense. Oh, I think it would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. I mean, do we know how many people have historical plaques in Columbia? Nobody. Well, the, the Columbia EDC about two years ago put about 15 historical plaques on buildings around town. Um, there are a number of ones that existed prior to that, but total number? I don't think it's more, probably 20, 25. I don't think the historical by designation as far as the borough or the historic district saying these are historic properties. I think there's histories of historic properties yeah. but like you said the EDC put up or whatever so that there's really nothing I think historically stating these are historic properties. The other thing is Mark I was about this other day maybe interrupt but uh, street signs we should have street signs up whether it's in the historic district, yeah. yeah. To me, I, it, this is all going the right direction in my mind. It, it, let's keep building the value and the, wow. the integrity of the historic district up. Yeah. And you know, when the projects come before us in the proper order, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it, it's this board's job then to really look at it and say, you know what? Bracket one versus bracket two is going to get back to more of a historic style of structure in our day. I think that's the technical expertise that the trust can provide. Now, will they be doing the administrative approvals as well, or just the No, just the seal that they call for us. So, are we to vote on recommending? I would ask for, for I would for prefer, us. just so that it's on the record that you guys have had a chance to talk through it and recommend to council that if you want to go that way, that it be 
the room and, and staff mm -hmm. part with the trust. Okay. <coughs> I will make a motion that we proceed with uh, recommending an agreement with Lake Street for the request for technical support. Appreciate you guys having me tonight. Happy to be here. Good. Any other business? The thing I would go at is um, we did get the CLG grant last year, which is paying for the resurvey of the district this year. We applied again for funding, and this, this round of funding we thought will be good to complement the historic district. It's is develop the design guidelines for the district. So that's that's the goal of after in this round of grant money is to mirror the mirror you know, the improved, updated um, survey of the district and then take that and say, okay, we these style of homes, let's talk about what, what's appropriate to put on the outside, what's appropriate for the middle or roof siding, etc. So then you guys have something to look at and say, okay, we're dealing with a Greek revival building, we're dealing with a Dutch, what's the term? Dutch. <laughs> I can't remember the, the, uh, the pool, the little windows on the side, the Dutch revival, whatever it is. Um, it's a great start, I lost, I lost the term. Um, so then you know what, what is appropriate for that style of work. I think, and, and not just for us, um, I've seen communities in the past and I work with them that have gone this way and it has completely changed people's perspective. Um, when you buy a house in a town like this, you think, oh, it's a cool little house. It's in a, it's in a big community that close to the river. When you find out you have a house built in 1815 and this is how it looked, and this is the type of siding, and this is, I mean, I've seen people even go out and start replacing banisters inside because they realize what they have and they want to get it back to its original style. Mm -hmm. And get that kind of energy and excitement into to what you just purchased and what you want. I think it's going to help us a long way. So the education piece for the public and design guidelines for which you guys can weigh your decisions on. Yeah, it could be interesting. It could be interesting to involve the board in that as an educational component too, and yeah. sort of, you know, I think. Back to, you know, I think of our firm did the Southern Market in Lancaster City, and one of the challenges, Nate and I were talking about this, one of the challenges was, can we put a contemporary structure uh, on it, off of it? You know, and this is this is just one person's perspective, and you can fall on all, all different spectrums, but I would err on the side that if you can attach it to the structure in a way that it can be removed without modifying the the masonry, I would be open to more contemporary design, providing it was quality materials mm -hmm. and craftsmanship. So it could be interesting to kind of flush out that maybe this is the time, maybe it's not, but if it was, it could, be, it could help the borough take a position on that. Yeah. As, as I feel like, I feel like Columbia is really developing in the five years we've been here. Oh well, yeah, but if you think about that building, that's how they're saving that building. So if you look at it, sometimes you have to bend the rule in order to keep that historical building intact. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because you walk across the street there, they're not leveling. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 Yeah.
So, we put so <laughs> I, I've gone around and around with those ethics forms with our attorney. His interpretation um, a couple years ago was that any board that has um, authority has to do it. And at the time we had that discussion, Harp was looked at more of having making final decisions on, on things that affect the value of property. Um, now that Harp is purely a, a, an advisory board, as it should be, I'm not I'm not sure you guys need to fill those out. Um, so here's the way. So the planning commission has to, the borough council has to, zoning hearing board has to. They all make correct decisions that affect the value. Of them. You guys are just Anything else? Do you have a motion to adjourn? I'll motion to adjourn. Thank you. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Really? Thank you.